Hi, I'm Ari Lynette, and today I'm going to be doing a video that I've been thinking about doing for the past month, as it is, of course, Pride Month, and I find that it's quite a turbulent time for a gay person like myself, primarily because of the ways that companies start pandering towards the LGBT community, and the way that they start marketing certain products and presenting themselves. This applies to companies, but it also applies to organisations like political parties, and also influencers you could extend this to. This was something that was partially inspired by some of my own observations over the past year, month, several Pride Months. It's based on my observations, but this was also inspired by a video done by Portia Pans, which was about whether or not straight people should do Pride looks. Th that got me thinking about the adaptation of the rainbow and gay pride related imagery into influencers marketing, brand marketing, product marketing, and just the effect that that has on the Pride movement and how we should respond to it. Today's video is all about Pride Month and product marketing. And when I say product marketing, I refer to a business selling itself, an organisation selling itself, and an influencer promoting themselves. All of those things with the use of rainbow imagery, Pride related imagery, and all of that malarkey during this one Pride Month. Right, so I've got a couple of disclaimers right here. First of all, hi, I'm a gay person. This is based on my own observations and experiences in the community, and this doesn't speak for everyone in the community. I am one voice, I'm one person, and I don't speak for every single opinion in the LGBT community regarding companies and global conglomerates and profiting off gay pride and all of that. Everyone has their own opinion on that. This is just my own, and I don't want anyone to take this as gospel, because I could very easily be wrong. And if I am wrong, feel free to let me know. Another disclaimer is that I'm going to be using the... I was going to say three of. Trio. <laughs> I'll be using the trio of companies, organisations, and influencers as the three main, um, I don't want to say perpetrators because that makes them sound incredibly guilty, but the people that are in a way profiting off of LGBT pride imagery. And not every point in this video will refer to all three of them. Most of them can at least act as a blanket point for them, but that's what I say when I refer to companies, organisations, and influencers. The last disclaimer is that this is just my opinion. That's my opinion! As I said before, I don't want anyone to take this as gospel. I also don't want anyone to be offended by any point I talk about in this video. This isn't intended to shock or create outrage. This video is intended to provide an insight into that world of marketing related to the gay pride movement, and kind of the perspective of someone in the community seeing that in how they're responding to it. And this is really based on, as I said, my observations over the past few years of seeing Pride Month, and especially this month, I've been watching things like a lot, probably a little too much. But enough talk, let's get on to the main bulk of this video. <laughs> The first point, and probably quite an important point to reiterate about any company in any situation, is that companies are not people. In any company, no matter how small, no matter how big, business is business. If something's profitable, if something's marketable, then they're going to try and sell that to the masses. As a blanket rule, I know there are exceptions to this, but typically the bigger the company, the more mainstream a product that they're selling has to be. Whether that's a bag of sweets, an ad on a bus, or something as part of an advertising campaign. There is an extent when you are promoting a product to the mainstream, especially if you're advertising something on TV, in mainstream stores, in big newspapers, that you have to appeal to the mainstream. And when you connect the idea of the LGBT community to the mainstream, you'll get something quite narrow. This might be quite difficult to do, but try and Take yourself out of knowledge, out of the knowledge of the LGBT community that you've amassed over looking on the internet for numerous years, but try and look at LGBT issues from the perspective of someone, someone who really doesn't know anything about the LGBT community. And the perceptions are going to be very narrow. You have certain stereotypes that are prevalent, you have a certain idea of what being LGBT is, there are certain sides of the LGBT community that are more marketable and more acceptable. This really disregards that the LGBT community is so diverse. There are so many different faces and voices and people from all different cultures, races, ages, gender identities, sexual orientations. That's huge, but that 
can't really be a thing when a company is marketing a product. They have to make something palatable to the mainstream. A mainstream that isn't aware of a lot of those complexities, probably isn't ready for a lot of those complexities. There are still a lot of people who would rather just ignore the issue of the LGBT community. And if it sounds awful describing the LGBT community as an issue, trust me, it's awful saying that, but that's how some people will consider that. And what happens when a mainstream company takes LGBT community and puts it into a mainstream product? Watering down. The age-old issue of taking something rich and complex and incredibly interesting and watering it down for the majority. This leads to lessening the impact of vital events in the community. This leads to a lot of erasure, especially of lesser known communities within the LGBT sphere, and a lot of erasure for ethnic minorities also. This makes it incredibly easy for companies to market LGBT-oriented products and images, and really anything that can be marketed can have this overlay of a rainbow and of pride, without really getting into what made it what it was in the first place. The first pride was a riot, and now it feels like companies are taking advantage of the fact that it's kind of become more of a festival, so it makes it a lot easier to get in on the action. It's a lot less controversial, though it will still be a little controversial, because you'll still have that minority of people that really don't want anything to do with us put in the media. But nowadays, it seems like companies are a lot more resistant of those pressures from those anti-LGBT groups, and will put out content that is accepting and promoting of LGBT rights. But you have to understand, it's still going to be a very watered down, desaturated version of the true LGBT lifestyle. To further this point, I have a little bit of a sub-point, in that companies are not people, but also that's bold to assume that people are all knowledgeable about everything LGBT. Companies don't know everything, just as people don't know everything. Now, I love being able to educate people about certain issues, to be able to give people the opportunity to learn about certain things, and gain a better understanding of the issues that are really important to me. But also, I can't always do that. Not everything I can do can be didactic. I can't always intend everything I say to teach something. And that's very true with a company. Sometimes, it gets to a point where you you just have to leave them to learn for themselves, and it's really going to be their prerogative whether they learn, how much they learn, whether they give a shit about learning in the first place. There are some companies that will go the extra mile and will do that little bit extra research to make sure a product targeted towards the LGBT community is respectful, has sufficient knowledge of our history, and really is something that we will like specifically. But then there are a lot of other companies that won't do that research and will just take the most basic, most bare minimum, most marketable, watered down version of that message and put it on a product without much thought. And now this leads me nicely onto my next subject. The next section of this video deals with a little dichotomy that really sums up Pride Month for me, and that is the pairing of truth versus trend. <laughs> The first point I want to use to iterate this dichotomy is timing. Now timing is a very big issue in terms of Pride Month marketing because it's Pride Month marketing specifically. Sometimes it feels like Pride Month has become a festival in the same way as Mardi Gras or Halloween or even the more commercialised form of the holidays. At its core, the LGBT Pride movement is so much bigger than just a holiday. It's not something that's for everyone to kind of just celebrate and laugh about and like do fun wacky things. It's something to raise awareness of the struggles that LGBT people have had over history, the struggles we're still facing now, and the struggles we could be facing because of certain people getting elected. It's a place where LGBT people can take a stand and really say, we are here, we are queer, and we're not going anywhere. Really a place for us to say, we're present, and our voices will be heard, and we're not going to be silenced by anyone. And with that, we do have a lot of fun, and that's a part of it. Having people performing, and having drag queens, it's all kind of a part of the fun that we have along with that other side of raising awareness. However, this is where the trend part comes in. During Pride Month, it is so easy for companies, organisations, and influencers to get in on the Pride action. If you are an LGBT person, or just a person in general, you might notice that during the Pride season, that's when most 
companies, organisations and influencers will raise awareness of LGBT issues. That extends to creating special tie-in products, that extends to influencers doing rainbow looks. It's all very centralised in this one month. And if you are an LGBT plus person, you might know that being LGBT plus isn't a seasonal thing. It's not like hay fever. Being gay is something I live with all year. It's a full-time job. No breaks, no holidays, it's just non-stop work. God, that makes it sound so bad. It's also a lot of fun and if you aren't being targeted or subject to slurs. But my point is, LGBT issues are important all year. Hate crimes happen all year. And sometimes it feels like companies, organisations and influencers only care about our issues during the month of June. Everything is incredibly centralised and there isn't a lot of awareness around the more serious issues of Pride Month. When you see an influencer doing a rainbow look, it's usually just, oh because rainbows are cool and yes, LGBT Pride, in a very watered down, a very safe way. When you see a product being marketed with a rainbow on it, it's really more about promoting the happy side of the movement rather than the serious side of the movement. And that's often what I see in marketing these days. And yeah, we can't talk about the amount of hate crimes and horrible things that happen to LGBT people around the world to your average nuclear family, fair enough. But sometimes it feels like, considering the first Pride was a riot with the Stonewall riots, and Pride nowadays has turned into this kind of festival, everyone's inviting themselves to the festival. And it isn't bad that everyone wants to kind of get into the action, but it feels like a lot of people wouldn't have really cared about this if it was just a riot. People wouldn't have got involved if it was just us fighting for our rights. And I know there are a lot of benevolent people online, a lot of people who are interested in social justice and would be involved, but that isn't the case for a lot of companies, a lot of organisations and a lot of influencers who really are looking for something popular and marketable. And during June, gay pride, LGBT pride happens to be popular. On one hand, that's really good for awareness, but on the other hand, it also waters down the message that we've been trying to put forward for a very, very long time. The next thing I want to talk about is a little social media trend that's been going on recently, but it happens every year during the month of June, a lot of different companies and a lot of different organisations decide to change their profile picture to a rainbow themed version of their profile picture. Now on one hand, awesome. It's a nice little show of support for a community that has been struggling. It's a show for diversity, it's a show for inclusion, it's a show for acceptance, and there's something very good about that. On the other hand, changing your profile picture to a rainbow themed profile picture is Perhaps one of the easiest things that can be done. It takes very little effort, it takes very little in terms of research. It's the same thing with a rainbow look. Like, influencers know what rainbows look like. So it's very easy to do that without getting into research and without really creating this deep investment into LGBT issues. And I know we should be grateful for the little bits and pieces we get, but it is important to know that this is something that takes very little effort. It's something that's very easy to do. You can do it like that. And nowadays, the effect is almost non-existent. It's practically expected by a lot of companies. So yes, have some good respect for that nice little olive branch to the community, but it isn't that big of a deal and no one's giving out awards for that anymore. And my final point is probably a little more of a social justice oriented aside, but would these companies know about the long history of fighting for LGBT rights? Would they know about the important figures in the community? Would they know beyond the white cisgender marketable base of LGBT pride that's been presented? Would they know about the incidents that have started up the gay rights movement? Would they know about the Stonewall riots? Would they know about the trans women of colour that really started this movement? Would they know about all that? Would they want to know about that? Would they care about that? I think that those are some legitimate questions we should be having about certain companies and organisations. Would they do the research about this really big movement that is incredibly important? And though it has this fun side, it's also quite serious. I know I might be harping on about something far too serious for something quite simple and easygoing, but it's a thought. Another point with truth versus trend is the idea of track record. <laughs> which absolutely matters in this case. If you are looking at a company, an organisation or an influencer marketing a product or 
even marketing themselves in the case of an influencer, you have to look at their existing track record on LGBT rights. I have two different case studies of companies that have kind of jumped on this bandwagon a little bit, but with two very different outcomes. And I'm going to start with Target. So Target stores in America, if you don't know, are one of the biggest supermarket chains in America. Now I will preface this by saying there was an early controversy regarding some donations to an anti-gay politician around 2010. And because of this, this led to a controversy around Lady Gaga pulling her plans to launch an exclusive version of the Born This Way album in Target stores because of this controversy. However, it seems like recently they have really turned things around by featuring same-sex couples in their advertising campaigns, making their children's sleepwear and toy lines gender neutral, heavily promoting pride-themed products, and also something quite bold and something I'm quite proud of them for, which was promising that trans customers could come into their stores and use the bathroom that corresponded to their gender identity. And in a time where politically there were bills going up discriminating against trans people in America regarding being able to use the bathroom that corresponded to their gender identity, that's something that would have had a really important impact as something that would have made a lot of trans people happy. And I can't speak for the trans community, but having such a direct response to a political issue, I have to give it to Target. They did a really good job. However, with all of these things, all of these little things, the advertising, the marketing, the announcements and policies and donations and everything under that umbrella, does that still mean we should be buying from Target's pride lines and kind of feeding into the more capitalist side of what Pride has become. Just because Target's done these really nice things, does this mean we really need to be buying their Pride t-shirts or whatever? Does all of this legitimise them from profiting off of Pride? Because to an extent, every single company that does something featuring Pride as a subject is capitalising and profiting off of the LGBT Pride movement, consciously or unconsciously. And then I have the second example, which is... <laughs> We're gonna get political in this one. So the Conservative Party of the UK decided to change their profile picture of their green tree logo into a rainbow tree logo. Now, before anyone stops, I know that same-sex marriage in the UK was legalised under a Conservative government, but there is a lot more we've got to talk about. The Conservative Party in the UK has had a long history of anti-LGBT efforts, so if you look at Theresa May's voting record, and statistically, her relationship with the LGBT community isn't amazing. Another recent point is the deportation of LGBT athletes who would be deported back to countries that would potentially have them killed for their sexuality being illegal. And you have to think about them essentially letting those things happen. And is it really appropriate for them to be pandering to the LGBT community in this way when they're really letting us down in a lot of other ways? This can be even dated back to the times of Thatcher with Section 28, essentially a law against promoting gay relationships in schools in favour of the more traditional family. Like, you just have to take one look at conservative history against LGBT people and know that this, an action like this isn't genuine. Anyway, putting a rainbow profile picture in is really futile because they have just done a lot of bad things that have really affected us negatively and we need to be mindful of track record because of that. Because a company could put up a rainbow profile picture but they could have this history that is really damaging towards the community and everyone has to consider that. Not just LGBT people. If a straight person goes online and is like, oh that's good, they're supportive. Are they really supportive? Take a second look because it can be the difference between supporting a genuine ally and supporting someone who's just doing it for clout. <laughs> This next section is going to be about makeup marketing because I have a makeup channel, I kind of have to bring it back to makeup and have that link to the world of makeup at the moment. But I do have three case studies of makeup related pride marketing and my reaction to it and what I think of each product and each effort by these three companies. So the first case study I have is Lime Crime, who launched a set of bundles of existing lip products with 10% of the proceeds going to the DTLA Center. Now this is a nice little donation and I appreciate that, but if you look at the names of the bundles that they have, this promotion only lasted for a week. Let's just get that off the table first. This lasted for a week and if you look at 
the names of those. It's all very stereotypical straight girl watches two episodes of Drag Race and now they think they're in with the gays and it's just something feels slightly inauthentic about that. And I appreciate that there has been an effort to one, donate, and two, appeal to the community. There is something that comes across as a little shallow. It feels like it's marketed more to allies than it is to actual LGBT people. And again, this is only my interpretation of the issue and some people might have a different opinion than that. Feel free to let me know in the comments. For the second case study I have Revolution, who launched a special new product line featuring some eyeshadow palettes and also a highlighter. With the products themselves, there was no promised percentage of proceeds going to anywhere, but Revolution as a company was donating £25,000 to the Human Dignity Trust and promising to march in global pride celebrations. How this will pan out and what we'll see of that is to be determined. I think that there is something quite respectful about this collection, but I do also think it is quite watered down. Like, one of the palettes is called Proud of My Life, and it's kind of more about the concept of pride linked with rainbows rather than a cohesive LGBT targeted message. And again, it kind of has to be marketable in a safe release, but I still feel like Revolution could have pushed that a little bit further to make something a little more authentic to the community. It's all a little bit safe. Nothing necessarily offensive, but just very, very safe, and it doesn't feel targeted as much to the community as it should be. And then the last case study I have is Morphe. Now, questionable ethics of Morphe aside, I think this collection is excellent. It's a special palette and brush set, with 100% of net proceeds going to the Trevor Project during Morphe's Pride Celebration Months, which are June and July, as stated on the website. Again, how this will pan out and how this will continue in the coming months, it's to be determined. But I have to say, I really like this release, not only because it's a cute palette, if I wasn't on a no-buy, I'd have this palette by now. But if you look at the names of the shades, it shows that a degree of research has been done, more than just the bare minimum of pride and rainbow. For example, the original gay pride flag was eight stripes instead of six, and each colour had a specific meaning. And in the palette, sure enough, names based on those eight meanings are in the palette. So sexuality and life and sunlight, they are all in there. And I think that that was a really good bit of research. Not only that, but you have references to Gilbert, to Harvey Milk, to Stonewall, and to communities that have historically accepted the LGBT community, such as San Francisco and New York City. Overall, it feels like Morphe's done research to make this palette not only respectful, but also representative of a community. And again, that is subject to opinion, not everyone's going to agree with that, but I think in terms of the Pride releases I've seen so far, this is really, really respectful and something I really like. However, taking these three case studies and overall any case study into product marketing regarding Pride, is any of it enough? Just because a company is doing this much, does it really mean we need to buy their palette or their bag of sweets or their themed iPhone case or whatever? Is any of that really enough? On one hand, there is the action of just donating, just donate to the Trevor Project or to a local charity that supports LGBT people, or even doing something like volunteering. That could be a lot more beneficial than just buying a product that is pride themed, even if it does have that little bit of proceeds going to a charity. There's that side, but there is another side that I do want to bring up that isn't really often brought up. There is a case that buying a product, especially buying a specific product that you think is especially respectful and representative of the community, buying a product can act as a thank you. It can act as a branch of support, as like, this is a really good release, thank you. For example, for the past few years, Skittles has been doing a all-white pack of Skittles, essentially taking away all of the colours because there's only one rainbow that matters this product. And I thought that was a really cool idea, and I've been buying those for the past few years because I really like them. I just think it's a really cool concept. And then with the Morphe palette, I would gladly buy that palette because I think it's very respectful and representative of the community. Buying a product and supporting a product can act as a thank you and as an extension of gratitude towards a company. Just as boycotting a product can act as a fuck you, for lack of a better term, <laughs> to a company that is promoting values you are against. So like boycotting a brand or boycotting a company or an influencer, that is representing a lot of things that you're against, such as discrimination in being anti-vaccination or being racist. It's a similar thing, only it's the other way around. Supporting a company or an influencer or an organisation that is really fighting for your rights, it's something to consider. So we're almost at the end of this video, and to round this off, I want to ask the question 
question. What now? It's interesting to think about how we can respond to all of this pride-related marketing. It's quite difficult because you have all of this marketing and promotion thrown at you and you aren't really sure what's genuine, what you want to support, what you want to avoid. It's challenging. So I have laid out three Pride Month commandments that you can follow if you want to, but I think can maybe shine a light on what we can do to see past performative wokeness and really appreciate more genuine allyship. First point is to listen to the voices of the LGBT community. This is especially to anyone who consider themselves an ally. If you are an ally, listen to us. It is as simple as that. We know you might be sympathetic and considerate to the issue, but at the end of the day, we're the ones that go through homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, LGBT-related discrimination affects us most importantly. So of course we're going to be sceptical of companies that are targeting products towards us and whether they actually care about us or not, or they're just trying to make a quick book out of us. And not all of us are necessarily right, but our voices are worth listening to. And I think that if you are looking at any sort of LGBT related issue, whether it's about pride marketing or whether it's about anything, listen to us. We're here, our voices are there to be listened to, and I think that there's a lot you can learn from listening to the people who are actually affected by these issues. For example, with issues of racism, I always make sure I'm listening to the people affected, I'm listening to people of colour, people who have experienced those things and do experience those things, because at the end of the day, I just won't know those things, so I need to listen. And if you don't know things about LGBT issues, the things that are pertaining to us, then you need to listen to us, because you can learn a lot from it. My second commandment is to be sceptical and do research. Oh my goodness, research is so important. First of all, it's important to note that a rainbow flag profile picture doesn't necessarily indicate a true allyship. It's an olive branch of support, but if you look at their track record, it can indicate that their actions might be performative, and you really need to do research on that. Now, one point I'm going to bring up is that some people can be silent on the issue, and one day might pop up with a post saying, oh, I'm supportive of LGBT rights. One example I wanted to briefly touch on was Taylor Swift's newest music video, where she really goes in on supporting the LGBT community by featuring a lot of public figures and a lot of positive messaging towards the LGBT community. Some people have called this out as performative. Some people have said that, oh, well, if you were so supportive, why haven't you said before? But in my opinion, I think that that was, first of all, a really good music video and a really good stand against discrimination. I personally really think that was a good move and I commend Taylor for that. And there are two points arising from that. Something as exciting as a music video promoting LGBT rights doesn't negate that previous silence, but that previous silence doesn't necessarily take away from the amazing thing that they're doing now. I think it's all about being sceptical, considering things, taking time to think about those things, because it might be the case that some people just don't know about those issues yet and take a little bit of time to learn and eventually come out saying, I support you. But you do have to consider that there are some companies, influencers and organisations that are just going to capitalise off of the movement, jumping on the bandwagon while having a chequered history against the LGBT community. And we're right to call people out for that. We're right to call out fake wokeness because what we really need in this day and age when there are still hate crimes going on and there are still countries where being gay is illegal and even countries where it's being punished by death, we need genuine allyship and we need to appreciate genuine allyship and make sure that we're holding companies to a certain standard. And the last point I want to talk about is that all support is appreciated. Now this might sound like I'm contradicting the past two points and I'm going to explain a little bit further why that kind of isn't. What I mean by all support is appreciated is that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfectly knowledgeable in every single issue regarding LGBT rights. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to be this expert to necessarily be an ally because every tweet, every vote, every donation, it counts to something and it has that little knock-on effect and it can have positive effects on the community. In my opinion, you don't have to have this perfect knowledge of LGBT rights, but as long as you're willing to listen and willing to learn, I'll accept those little moments of support and efforts to help. That goes for companies, organisations, influencers, and people alike. I think that if we follow those commandments roughly, this will all help us to see through performative action and hopefully be able to appreciate genuine allyship. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. I've been Ari Lynette, you've been amazing, and happy Pride Month!
Thanks for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up and come say hi in the comments. You can find me on Twitter at Ari Network and on Instagram at Ari Lynette. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Love you for watching.